Hey, what's up YouTube? Welcome to another Morales tutorial video. Today, we are going to check the Get Owners by Contract for the Morales API. This endpoint get owners of NFTs for a given contract. And also, if the contract address is not yet indexed, it will automatically start the indexing process. So at the end, we are going to have something like this. Here we have three input fields on which I'm going to paste here a wallet address. We have to select the chain. By default is Ethereum, but you can select any EVM compatible blockchain. And the limit is going to determine the amount of elements the API is going to return to us. So let's click on Get Owners. As you can see here, we have the name of the collection, CryptoPunks in this case, the block number for the specific NFT, the token ID, who is the owner, and also the token address. And as we set the limit to 10, we get 10 elements in the response. Let's try with another contract. So let's paste the address here, get owners. And as you can see here, this collection is called Autoglyphs, and we have the same information, the block number, the token ID, the owner, and the token address. So if you want to learn how to accomplish this, keep watching because we are just getting started. So if we go back to the API reference and paste here a contract address as we did on the front end, we are going to get a response like this one in a JSON format with all the information we need, including some more I didn't show you on the demo. So for today's tutorial, we are using React.js on the front end and for the backend Django as our Python backend framework. So let's copy the Python code Morales provide us and go back to our Django project. I already have a Django project prepared here with an empty script called services.py. So let's paste the script here and we have to provide some parameters. Here's our API key. If you don't have a Morales account yet, this is the part of the video. When you hit pause, go to morales.io, create your free account, and then you will have a free API key here on your admin panel. So I'm just going to copy mine, paste it down here, and now we have to provide the address, the chain, and the limit. So let's use one of the address I used before. We are going to keep using Ethereum, and I'm going to set up the limit again to 10. So let's save this. And going back to our terminal, let's try if this works properly. First of all, be sure you have installed Morales. So pip install Morales. I already have it, so let's try this script. Python services.py, click enter. And as you can see here, we get this big response. And yes, the response looks strange because this is the format we get from the token URI, but basically we have all the information we need here. Getting this information was really easy because with just this small portion of code, we were able to take all the information we wanted for the owners of this specific contract. Now we want to use this dynamically, so let's change this to something more useful to us. So basically, I'm going to transform this into a function which is going to get the address, the chain, and the limit as parameters, the same as we have on the front end. So with the magic of addition, we have our function ready. Also remember that using your API key into your code is a security risk because if you're going to push your code to a code repo like GitHub, everyone is going to see your API key. So I'm going to transform this into an environment variable as well. So now we can store our API key on this .m file over here. And if you are going to push this to a code repo, just add it to your git ignore. Now our script is ready to be used on the backend, so let's do it. Here on the project views, first, don't forget to import that script. So from .services, import get NFT owners, and I also imported JSON. So we have here a new view called get owners. This view is going to take all the input parameters from the front end through this request variable. So we can say chain equals request dot get dot get chain, the same for the address and the same for the limit. However, as you can remember, this limit is going to be an integer. So we have to parse this into an integer as well. Now with the input parameters ready, we can use the function we just created, NFT owners, 
it's going to be equal to get NFT owners and the auto completion already set up the chain, the address and the limit. But just to be cautious, we are not going to use positional arguments, but instead specify each one of them. So chain equal to chain, address equal to address, and the same for the limit. This function is going to connect to the Morales API and give us the response. But this response is going to be a Python dictionary. And as we intend to use this on the front end, JavaScript is not able to understand Python dictionaries. So we have to transform this into a JSON file. JSON owners equal json.dumps NFT owners. And now we can just return this JSON. So return a HTTP response of the JSON owners. This view is ready, so we can take its name and add it to our URLs. So here I'm going to create a new path. And of course, be sure you have import the views from your project. So path get owners, views dot get owners. And as we want to use relative paths, I'm going to give it a name, name get owners. Nice. And that's it for the backend. Now we are going to connect with the frontend using this endpoint. So let's do it. First of all, on your package.json, be sure to add a proxy with the IP address of your Django server. As we are running it locally, we are going to use localhost in the port 8000. So here on the frontend, these input variables, contract address, chain, and limit are stored on this variable called params, which has inside of it a chain, an address, and a limit. And these are the input parameters we need to execute our function on the backend. So let's connect to the endpoint. In order to connect React with Django, we are using Axios. So if you don't have Axios, go ahead on your terminal and type npm install Axios, and then you can import it over here. So here, I have a new function called refresh NFT owners. And here on the get statement, I'm going to connect to that endpoint. So slash get owners question mark. And we want to send these input variables I already talked about. The auto completion is good enough to understand what I want to accomplish. So let's do it. And as you can see here, I'm sending over the address, the chain and the limit. If this connection goes well, I want to have a console.log of that response. Also, this refresh NFT owners is already connected to this get owners button. So let's give it a try. Let's open the console. Let's put here a contract address and the chain by default is Ethereum and the limit 10. So get owners. And as you can see here, we got the actual response. And here on results, we have the information of all the owners of any token this contract has. Again, this response is based on this limit. So let's open this up and we have here a lot of information, such as the block number, the NFT metadata, the token ID, the owner, and the token address. This was really easy, isn't it? So the only thing left for us here is to take this JSON response and show it down here as I showed you at the beginning of the video. So in the front end, instead of just using a console.log, I'm going to erase this and use this set NFT owners. And I want the rest.data.result because as you already saw here, is where the actual information is stored. And this send owners function is going to store all the response on this NFT owners variable. So down here, I already have a variable called rendered owners, which is going to map over that response and create a card out of each one of them. So let's put the most important elements down here, such as the name of the collection, the block number, and the same from the token ID, the owner of the token and the token address. That's it. So let's give it a try. Let's put another contract address here and click on get owners. And as you can see here, we got the exact same response as the beginning of the video. And this was really easy. And remember, you can take any of the response elements to be shown here. The decision is yours. And that's it for today's demo. And again, remember, 
With just a small portion of code, we were able to connect to the Morales API and get this information in almost no time. How cool is that? That was it for today's video. Don't forget all the code for this lesson is on the GitHub repo, so don't forget to check out the video description. And also click here to learn more about Morales technology and see more videos. I'm serious. Click it. Do it now. Go ahead. See more videos. You did it? Nice. See you on the next occasion. Bye.